just the afternoon discussion with the class. I'm just re-explaining this, so I'll go back. There's our shear force diagram. I just pick random numbers for the plane, and they balance up. Say the um, there's 10 kilonewtons on each of the engines. I've just said the centre of mass of the aircraft is 50 kilonewtons, right in the middle. They're not realistic numbers, but I just picked anything for the sake of a demonstration, which means the 90 going down, the force on each wheel pushing back up is 45. So that one there is 45 pushing back up as well. Okay. So, because moments are force times distance, here's our shear force diagram where we've just followed the forces up and down. The value here is minus 10, because it's 10 down. Minus 10 plus the 45 means the top of that is 35. Means that is plus 25. Come down 10. Come down 50. Come down another 10. Go up 45, back down to zero. The maths balances. I just pick random distances. 0, 1, 2, 4 metres, 6 metres, 7 metres, 8 metres out. When we're talking bending moments, a bending moment. Equals force times distance. There's the force, there's the distance. The area under that little part of the graph there is the bending moment. So go through. 10 times, obviously, zero is where you start the bending moment at the end. There is none. When I go in one metre, one metre times minus 10. So that one there, I'll write it here, minus 10 kilonewton metres. Over here, the total area to the left of that now is, that's one metre along times 35. So it's plus 35 minus 10, so that's plus 25. kilonewton metres, area 2, area 1, area 3, that's 2 metres times 25, add another 50, it was 25, here the bending moment is plus 75 kilonewton metres, there it is out there. Now we start obviously subtracting, and because this is symmetrical, I don't need to bother so much about the maths. That's minus 50. That's minus 35. That's plus 10. So 75 minus 50 makes it 25. Take another 35 off it. There it's minus 10. There's a bending moment diagram for the jet sitting on the tarmac.